All right. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. My name is Christopher Harrison. This is Web Wednesday, the show where I bring on some fantastic people to talk about different uh, web dev related technologies. Now, one of the things that uh, has certainly become a lot more popular uh, these days is AI and ML. Like it's, it's one of those that you just really can't avoid talking about, it seems, this day, uh, these days. And and, you know, a lot of times when people think about AI and ML, they're immediately thinking, you know, about something that's going to be overly complex and more specifically, something that's going to be written in Python, probably not going to be able to run on the browser. Well, as it turns out, that's not the case, that there actually are libraries that you can use in JavaScript to actually run AI and ML and do those types of things in the browser. And so I'm very uh, pleased to be joined today by Gant, who's going to walk us through uh, TensorFlow.js, which is exactly that. It's a JavaScript library that will uh, give you the ability to uh, work with ML models and do cool things inside the, uh, the browser. But you didn't hear, come here to, let me do that sentence one more time. You didn't come here <laughs> to hear, there's just too many hears in that sentence. They were just <laughs> throwing my, my, my brain off. You didn't come here to hear me speak English, nor did you come here to hear me talk about TensorFlow. You came here to hear Gant um, talk about it. So with that, Gant, thank you for joining. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for having me. This is already fun. <laughs> I'm already having fun, so this is already worth it. It was great. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And thanks for joining, everybody. Have a good night. No. Yeah, end on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> well, George Costanza and just walk out of the meeting room for perfect. anybody who gets that reference. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> got to be a certain age to get that. Um, but anyway, um, again, thanks for thanks for for, for joining. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to start with uh, this um, sort of basic question, which is mm -hmm. like, how did you become? How did you become Gant? How did you get into into yeah. this? Ooh. Uh, well, there were a lot of choices, but I chose this particular Gantt uh, uh, for a reason. <laughs> I uh, well, yeah, I, I, I'm old. I, I'm, I'm finally letting my gray come on in. So you know, I'm, I'm I've been around for a bit. And when I was young, um, I grew up here in New Orleans. Woo! New Orleans, raise the roof. Lower the floor. I, I'm not that cool. Stop the walls of the Death Star. Things like that. Um, so what happens is uh, in New Orleans, being a nerd was hard. I love technology, but my dad did not. Um, but I fortunately got a Nintendo, and I used to play that and just blew my mind. I was finally like controlling things on the TV, and it was like this brand new world. I was like, yeah, this is so cool. And so I played Nintendo. It was pretty much my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother and I played Nintendo. We just played so much, and I fell in love with... Uh, well, I guess like that's my first computer, you know, and, and I was just like, wow, this is so cool. And then my dad's uh, work computer, finally, he, he was forced to, whether he liked it or not, he had to have a work computer and uh, I'd get on there and wreak complete havoc. I deleted autoexec.bat. I did all kinds of things that were wrong on there. But one of the things I did that was right is I found QBasic and I made the computer say, hello, Gant, on the screen. And that was all she wrote. After that, I was all the way into computers because I went from a world of like, oh, my goodness, now I'm playing this. And I was like, I can actually not just control, but I can create what's on the other side of that. Uh, so my dad fought uh, avidly against my nerddom. <laughs> I was supposed to be a football player. <laughs> so um, I was uh, I was told that if I, as long as I did sports, he would pay for my computer. And so I did a lot of sports and I got a computer. It's uh, usually the yeah. opposite. Usually it it's is. the, if you do schoolwork, we'll, we'll pay for your sports. It's not if you do sports, we'll pay for your, your schoolwork. No. <laughs> It was it was a weird weird uh, situation, but but if you what I did is I calculated out the the price per hour value of that to getting a computer. I was like, ah, oh, this is worth it. <laughs> and so, 
<laughs> um, I wrestled and I played football. And I did a bunch of different stuff. Finally, I got my computer and I started learning uh, from basic. I went from QBasic, I went to Visual Basic, and then I went to uh, college for computing because uh, down here and at that time, um, there was just no path towards technology other than going into computer science. So I got into computer science where they were teaching Java, but during that whole time, I made my entire money, which paid for my college, um, in building websites. So I started building uh, websites in JavaScript, PHP, and classic ASP uh, nice. before the .NET. And uh, it was a very lucrative and fun style of, uh, you know, I was being paid very well for being a college student and uh, graduated at the graduating class of two people <laughs> <laughs> of uh, computer science. There was a thousand graduates that year, but only two computer science graduates. Uh, me and my friend Tang, he went off to NASA. I stayed here in New Orleans, <laughs> uh, where I worked for a lot of you know, sort of like it was, I was doing tech, but it was starting to get to the point where I was going to have to leave this wonderful city. You know, um, all the jobs were everywhere else. And then uh, through the wonderful world of open source, I started to connect and go speak at conferences and meet companies and then start working remotely. And then fortunately, I've never had to leave this wonderful place. I am actually part owner in a company. Uh, we have 30 employees. And uh, yeah, it's just so much uh, coolness that I've got to like build my dream here. And uh, yeah, CIO of a wonderful uh, shop where we do all kinds of stuff, uh, JavaScript, but specifically a lot of React Native called Infinite Red. So definitely look at us for any of your mobile app stuff. I love it. Love all of that. I definitely also love uh, love New Orleans. Uh, Gant and I were talking yeah. a little bit uh, beforehand, yeah. um, and just kind of mentioning it's it's been way too long um, yeah. since I since I've been to New Orleans. I I uh, I need to change that. It's such a wonderful place. Um, we have so many conferences, but what's funny is like it's we're we're not very well known for our technology. So uh, it was a little bit lonely. I bought I went to Babbage's and bought Doom. <laughs> and and then I didn't have a computer to put it on, so I just like would read the back of it and read the manual. It's like, when I get a computer, I'm gonna play Doom, you know? Like, just I'm gonna like, own this game based on how many so times I read fun. the manual. <laughs> right, that's exactly right. I couldn't wait, uh, but you know, when you think of New Orleans, you don't usually think of tech. Um, but now it's actually doing quite well in tech, and of course, everywhere is doing well in tech. Um, you know, bless the internet for that. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. 100%. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, I could certainly fill the hour talking about New Orleans and, <laughs> and you know, the, the, the proper way to make a gumbo and, yeah. and all of that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's not what we came here to talk about. Um, what we came here to talk about is a little thing called TensorFlow, or more specifically, TensorFlow.js. And mm -hmm. before we get into TensorFlow.js, let's ask the, 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 the precursor question, which is yeah. what is TensorFlow? Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's let's rewind a bit uh, back when some of our some of our older programmers started doing AI. We were doing things like minimax algorithms and all these other kinds of things where we were programming our mentality into software. So maybe if you're old enough to play Street Fighter or things like that, people were actually programming, you know, what should happen and what's going on there. Then around, I want to say 20, well, I'll say like 2006, people started really saying, well, can't we use data for these things? And then in 2012, we started to see machines doing human-like level of, 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 of uh, sort of like establishing stuff. Like, is there a bird in this photo or things like that? And it like, as a coder, like, like, I don't know how I would code, is there a bird in this photo? That's extremely complicated. But... I was able to, uh, what's, what starts to happen here is we start to figure out how to use data to sort of manifest the algorithms. Um, and that's the concept at like, at some level, I like to explain that is the way that we actually do things with machine learning. Machine learning is the concept that, um, you know, as a programmer, you get the solution and then you code it. Um, but as a uh, machine learning, we have the answers 
and then we're letting the machine sort of figure out the balance to kind of get there and be able to get to the other side of that. And uh, machine learning kept growing and getting more popular in 2012, I think, you know, Google only had one machine learning model in production. At the end of 2017, they had like 4,000. It's hard <laughs> pressed for like, I can't even write an email now without my email services, like finishing my emails. Everybody's seen like GitHub Copilot, like finishing my code. Like the, the, the world of this all coming together is coming through machine learning. And in order to do that without all the linear algebra, <laughs> without going and taking Andrew Ng's Stanford course and plowing through 50 hours worth of math, um, you need a framework. And the frameworks that are doing all that complex math and optimizing things and accessing GPU, those are things like TensorFlow. Okay. So, so that's so that's TensorFlow. So it's it's yeah. there to help make it easier then for me to take all of that data, um, put it in, and let the computer start to figure out the pattern. So when I give it a new yes. piece of data, it can go, oh, okay, this is going to be the answer. This is where it's going to fit, or whatever whatever mm -hmm. the answer is there. Yeah. So then TensorFlow JS, I'm going to guess, is the JavaScript version of said framework. Yeah, exactly. Uh, shortly thereafter, they announced the, the idea of, let's not just do this in Python and keep it on a server. What happens if we, um, we're, we're all JavaScript, I forget the name of the law, but if JavaScript can do it, JavaScript will. <laughs> and what happens is uh, quite specifically, yeah, um, they're saying like, all right, well, what happens when we move this to JavaScript? All kinds of cool things happen because of that. One, we can start using Node. Um, two, we can start using like microservices that are out there. And then three, we can actually push this onto all kinds of devices, any device where JavaScript exists. So we could put it on mobile phones and we could put it on the browser on the client side. And when it comes out over to the client side, it, it creates this ridiculous level of uh, privacy as well. Because uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, not too long ago, there was an aging app and everybody got really upset because they found out it was sending those photos of your face over to servers somewhere <laughs> else and you didn't own it and the rights were all bad and everything like that. What if, uh, what if it wasn't doing that on their server? What if it was doing that right there on your device and the privacy was ensured? That's the benefits that you get like on device training. And honestly, that's one of the cool things you get with TensorJS in browsers. And and also like and and granted, you know, we as developers, we've we've started to kind of abuse this, um, <laughs> but start to take advantage of the processing power that does exist on on the oh, client. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the, like 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 that old saying that you know, um, you know, people went to the moon on like you know yeah. a, a fraction of what our our, our little pocket device phones right. um, yeah. can uh, can can now do. So using TensorFlow JS then starts to gives give us a little bit of an ability to take advantage. Of, uh, of of that computing power. Yeah, there was a website that would uh, turn you into an anime character, and it was a really cool. It was like a, you know, anime me dot. Or I can't remember. I'm not going to give you domains to go try. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what happened is you you go like type in there, and one of the problems they had is like, hey, too many people are asking for their anime character right now. Uh, come back later, and right. it's a free service, so of course they weren't going to like pay more to give more free anime characters of your face out there. Uh, but that's a great opportunity for sharing that for, for something. If I went and did it, and then it was actually just doing it on my machine, you know, my GPU uh, activates, no problem. You know, uh, I could animate a <laughs> CSS gradient and activate your GPU as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's plenty of ways to do it. At least this way, it's, it's helping people out. Okay. Uh, by the way, it's Atwood's law uh, from yes, uh, from Atwood's coding horror. Yeah, that Atwood's is correct. Law. Yeah, that is I, it. I, I I knew the website. I just could not remember remember his uh, his his name. Um, yeah. Now we're gonna get into um uh, we're, we're gonna get into the code in in like just a second. Um, mm -hmm. But I do want to ask you kind of real quickly here is if. 
trying to figure out how I want to ask this question. Ask away. Um, I, li- I like it. I like it messy like my food. <laughs> Everything in New Orleans, if, if you have a roast beef po' boy and it's not dripping down to your elbow, that is not a roast beef po' boy. That is, that is some kind of strange sub from somewhere else. You're not allowed to eat that. <laughs> Something from New Jersey. Um, <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. I'm allowed to, to make that okay. joke. Um, <laughs> No, so um, so you know when when people think about programming with with machine learning, they're typically thinking about programming that with Python, and and Python's yeah. really nice because it lends itself just as a language so mm-hmm. well to, yeah. to to machine learning. Um, is that still the case with JavaScript? Does it feel as natural programming this in JavaScript as it would doing it in Python? Yeah, one of the great things about a framework in this instance, is that the API is almost transferable. So uh, one quick tidbit, and uh, I guess I'll do this as a, yay, this is a plug. Uh, (laughs) I I wrote a book on this. So if you're wondering why I'm so pro this way, it's because I wrote a book on it, of course. Um, But I'll tell you this. uh, In the book, I I did some stuff. Everything in here is JavaScript. But in prepping some of this stuff, sometimes I wrote Python. Sometimes I wrote JavaScript. Um, TensorFlow is a framework gives you that opportunity because the, the the framework commands give you this benefit of saying, okay, I'm going to be doing this in a Python style way, right? And then I'm gonna be doing this in a JavaScript kind of way. Um, but that's basically a difference between snake case and camel case uh, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, for the primary framework, um, there's not complete parity between the, the, the two, but there's very close to it and they're always working on that. Uh, but it's great is if I, depending on where I am, it's like, okay, I need to one hot encode this. Now, you don't have to know what that means, but uh, I know if I'm in Python, it's one underscore hot. <laughs> and if I go to JavaScript, it's one capital H hot. And I'm doing the same thing. So that's really cool. Uh, I will say that in assisting libraries, there's strengths and weaknesses. So, um, for instance, in sort of like data manipulation, data science has sort of flourished in the Python world quite significantly. So if I'm like digging through a bunch of data, there's a ton of things already set up there. Um, But then if I'm presenting the data, if I'm sort of like bringing this out there and making it more dynamic, well, I mean, uh, the the simplicity and, and the extendability of the web it's far superior, you know, bringing that information and in, in charting and, and, and stuff on uh, uh, JavaScript. It's like, OK, <laughs> don't fight that battle. <laughs> You'll lose. <laughs> so uh, I, I do share a benefit of the fact that um, the fact that the framework is keeping a close parity that helps out a lot. OK. All right. Very cool, very cool. And by the way, I am all for shameless plugs. So 100% oh. plug your book. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, and yeah. follow me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <Done>. Exactly. <laughs> um, cool. All right. So then what does TensorFlow.js look like? I know, like, sort yes. of like, you know, a, a, a late night talk show, um, you know, the zookeeper brings in the animal. What did you, what did you bring today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. First thing I want to do is kind of give you just an example of, um, I'm going to go to a website that I created called TensorFlowTicTacToe.co. And TensorFlow tic-tac-toe.co could have been .com, but it, then it wouldn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the reason I wanted to kind of show this one is because uh, I, I still want to kind of show the concept here because I've spoken to a lot of web developers. And for web developers, one of the things that I see them have uh, a lot of struggling with is the concept of the fact that it's fuzzy logic. Just like a person could have the trouble between seeing if, um, you know, is, is that a dinner roll or is that a dog? You know, <laughs> like there's, there's funny photos that kind of look the same one way or another um, and you can get them wrong. AI can get it wrong too. It's not 100%. And as programmers, we're always like, oh, you make things work 100%. Everything has to work 100%. Um, and the truth is, no. Um, the more data you have and the better the algorithm that's kind of like learning from, the better things go. So I just kind of want to show you what it looks like. So uh, before I get into code, I want to show you um, 
this website has an AI on there that has seen zero games. So you can see it said, oh, I've seen zero games here. So I'm going to click this button called Make the AI Move. And this is all happening on my browser. So if anybody pulls this website up, they'll have zero games and everybody else has zero games. But they're all learning differently. And it's all learning directly on device. There's no uh, central brain, no central hub. Um, so that's actually a really good move. Um, well done, AI. Uh, and it, actually, that's a great block. So yeah, well done. So, so here we go. We have a block there. And I don't know if that's a good move or not, but I'm going to just keep making AI move. Uh, see, now it's going for the kill. And see, there should have been a block there. But it doesn't know. It doesn't even know how this game works. And so O doesn't even go for the kill. <laughs> <laughs> this is randomness. This is complete silliness, right? And so if I go back and I say, OK, well, what, what should have um, what should have X done here? I say X should have gone here, you know, perhaps. And then I can make, uh, so AI is going here, and then X wins, and then I get that. Well, now I've got some data, right? So I could say, oh, learn to play more like X. And so when I click this button here, it's live training right now, and it's done. And now X is a, a little bit better at being able to play. And so if I were to, um, let's go ahead and make it move. I'll, I'll, I'll pretend I'm O this time, right? X will go here. O went here, right? Mm -hmm. And then like that. Actually, we should have mirrored it or something so it doesn't look like it's a complete recreation of it. <laughs> but uh, let me make a different mistake, of course, here. Well, X has got two wins. It's hard for it to lose here. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> so one, so this is the problem with data. You need large amounts of data, right? It's, it's, uh, it's like the New York Jets. It's hard for it to lose. It's still figured out a way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we're saying here, so I could tell it again, uh, you know what, X, you should have you should have gone there and then continue to do this. So if I sit here and I and then I hit that again, now it just got a little bit smarter. You can see it's seen two games. So I mean, there's zero chance like it should be uh, still here. And the problem is, since it's randomized, I can't prep for this. Uh, <laughs> it's always going to play differently and, and then learn a little bit more. But I just want to show you, like, there it goes there. And let me just let me make this mistake. And then, ah, uh, just terrible. Let me let me go ahead and make a different mistake. Let me make the same mistake I made last time. And it should not mess up this time. OK. OK. <laughs> um, I've also played games where it's learned a lot faster than that. <laughs> it depends on where it starts, because it could start to complete randomness. Um, but there, and you can sit there and continue to play this over and over again. Now, I don't want to do it with everybody's time today, but I think that's a good idea for you to go in here, take a minute, play a few games, and then you can actually watch it get pretty smart. And if you can play six or seven games showing one side how to play, um, it actually is really good, and you create a pretty unbeatable uh, tic-tac-toe AI in just about six games. Okay, it's it's a little faster than they did it at uh, uh, at the end of War Games. Yeah, for... that's right. So yeah, it's a little bit faster. <laughs> Number of players zero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joshua. <laughs> Which, by the way, for anybody who's not seen War Games, is uh, it's it's a great so '80s movie. It's got uh, Matthew Broderick um, and uh, Ali Sheedy, um, mm. and it's it's about a that a, a supercomputer um, that's supposed to like figure out um, how to to wage um, more specifically like nuclear war um but um but at the very end of the movie they they go in and they train the computer and they train it with uh with tic-tac-toe and yeah. amazingly like even to this day it's probably the best um yeah. cinematic um uh, version of AI that we've ever seen because it it really like this is very much how you would do it is like just keep doing this like you've given it the the, the parameters let it then start to to figure out and then eventually yeah. it figures out tic tac toe can't win it eventually figures out nuclear war can't be won so it's it's like it's got a good ending um, yeah. um, to it but uh, yeah it's 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 a great movie it, it's certainly you know eighties cheese but it it holds up it. pretty well it's 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 oh, a fantastic yeah. movie. You, you need to watch War Games, Sneakers, and yeah, I'm sorry, you have to watch Hackers. <laughs> I know hacking the Gibson is flying through, and you'll be like, how do you show all this stuff? You know, it's so good. Those are all yeah. essential movies uh, to turn someone into a complete and nerd. 
and and, and a great pendulet uh, cameo in, yes, uh, in yes, Hackers indeed. as well. Yes, big fan. <laughs> Uh, yep. Mr. The Plague. But anyways, I, I feel like I feel like uh, there was like <laughs> gonna, again topics that we could talk about for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, age test. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, how about that that TensorFlow uh, uh, JS uh, code? But why, yeah. why don't we why don't we start Let's taking a look at that? Some code here, okay. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and jump into some code, and I just kind of want to show you some stuff. So uh, what I would like to do here is talk a little bit about, uh, so we have this whole aspect of um, that data was pretty simple, but but this scales to images and scales to all kinds of really cool stuff there. So um, I just have this uh, completely vanilla um, code sandbox here. And I figured, let's go ahead and let's do some like blow you away kind of stuff. And this is actually stuff I do in chapter two of the book. And I think it's pretty entertaining and interesting. So we're going to write some JavaScript and we're going to take an already trained model and we're going to have some fun with it to check that out. So uh, if I bring this over here and I say, OK, so we want to bring in, what do we want to bring? We want to bring in TensorFlow, uh, or oh, it's at TensorFlow. Look how uncool I am. So we have at TensorFlow slash TFJS. There it is. So if you're not familiar with Code Sandbox, I'm just bringing on, uh, this is like Yarn or NPM install. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in one of the models. Uh, models like um, you saw in the tic-tac-toe example, we had data that was collected. And it said training, and it created a function or an algorithm uh, to figure this stuff out. And I like to say function, especially for web developers. Um, all, all my math friends will be very upset that I'm calling a model <laughs> a function. But hey, it's not for you right now, OK? It's very, it totally makes sense. Data in, data out. So I'm going to bring in a library called MobileNet. So we're going to say at TensorFlow um, models. And then I'm going to bring in uh, MobileNet. And I'm hoping that this says MobileNet. I'll bring that in here. OK. So we've got uh, two libraries being brought in, classic stuff. So I'm going to import them. I import star as uh, TF from uh, at, yeah, TensorFlow.js. Perfect. Thank you for knowing what I was going to do. Import <laughs> star as MobileNet from and then uh, at TensorFlow MobileNet. OK. So this is TensorFlow, the library. And this is a model that's come in here um, that we have set up now. So now we can go ahead and we can take um, an image. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab an image. Uh, I'm going to grab uh, right here. I have it set up. So I'm going to do this in JavaScript. Um, let image equal a new image object. And then I'm going to say image equals cross origin because I am going to be grabbing this off of uh, imager. OK, I think I spelled that right. I can never spell an anonymous mouse. And then I have, <laughs> just to be safe here, I've got this URL I'm going to paste in. So I'm setting the source URL for that here. Um, and then uh, I think we should see this, right? So uh, down here, I'm going to get rid of all this fun stuff that's printed out here that's the default for that. And let's kind of take a look at this for a moment here. So I'm going to say h1. And then I'm going to say tfgs. And we're going to take a look at our version here. And let's see. I could do this, uh, this up here in this h1, can I? Using no frameworks here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to keep it vanilla for you. Uh, no, this I can go with it. anything. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to throw in some fun stuff. but uh, So this is TensorFlow. That's the object we have there, uh, version and TFJS. And so now we are looking at, let's see here. Ah, so you can see that's correct. And if we, we take a look over here, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, that is the version that we brought in, uh, 3.8.0. So yeah, we're, we're, we've loaded up. It was easy. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and do a, um, a CDN to go ahead and grab this, you could do that as well. Uh, there's no nothing stopping you from kind of doing this all the fancy ways that you like to do JavaScript. And then let's let's see this image real quick. I want to make sure we can watch it. So image source, I'm put here, and then um, that's too big. 
this is an unsplash image. <laughs> so yeah, we, we have uh, freedom to use it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, here I have a truck, right? And this is just a little picture of a truck. Now, I want to see if the computer can tell if this is an image of a truck, right? So one of the things I think that's really cool about this, and we talked about, uh, there's an XKCDN uh, or XK, yeah. I'm, XKCD, yeah. I just threw in other, <laughs> other letters because I'm using CDNs, right? Uh, <laughs> where we're talking about like how hard it is to tell like what's inside of an image and you're going to need five years and you'll need like a research team. And that was like really true not long ago. But now I have the ability to kind of check out all kinds of cool stuff. So um, what I can do now is I can take this awesome little mobile net here and I'm gonna load this model up and I want you to kind of like understand what's happening here. So I'm gonna say mobile net dot load. And then uh, I get uh, back on that, I get a promise. And what this is doing is it's pulling down uh, the mobile net uh, model for me and then wrapping it up, get everything set. So I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna do a then here because um, I'm not inside an async function, so I'm not gonna get too too wild in there. But uh, now I just wanna see if that image has a, um, has a truck in it. So I'm gonna say model.classify the image. Now in AI, there's all kinds of different things you can do. You can do object detection. You can generate new things. You could do all kinds of cool stuff. Today, the stuff you can do is crazy. Generative uh, models are all the fad right now, but it wasn't that long ago, just being able to see what's in an image was really hard. So that's an image classification problem. So I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and classify this JavaScript image right here. Now we could also do it uh, do give it the one on a page. We could also give it a video. We can give it all kinds of different things. Uh, and then once it's done classifying it, I'm going to say, give me your predictions. And I would like to, I love how it's always updating every time, every time I stop <laughs> typing for a second, it's like wrong. <laughs> You're, <laughs> you didn't type it right. All right. Console dot log. So uh, well, yeah. well, no, keep 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 typing away. So one of the things that's worth highlighting here is, you know, um, what what Gannett highlighted before is the fact that um, this is not going. Th th this is going to be fuzzy. So it's yeah. going to look at this and it's going to go. I think it's a truck, but it might also be a banana because it's yellow, or it might right. also be a van, or it might also be, you know something else. So it's it's going to look at it and it's going to give it its best guess, but it also knows that it's not going to be 100%. So it will give you a set of different guesses uh, to go along with that. That is absolutely correct. And this is a little weird for people, right? Um, like uh, it, you could take the same image and then just uh, in some ways uh, adjust it a little bit or change the background or things like that. And then it actually chooses different things to pick up and, and sort of identify. So uh, it's a little bit weird it, that, you know, as a matter of fact, there's a whole field of um, AI security in, in the sense that what pixels can I change that a human wouldn't even notice that would send the AI flying, you know, and just like, what is this? This is a toaster, you know? <laughs> and uh, there's some really cool stuff out there for that too. Uh, I would probably burn a, like two <laughs> or three hours on stuff like that um but but yeah let's let's uh let's see if we're successful and then we will kind of go over this code just in a little bit more detail for a second here so we have our predictions you can see that's when i had just that and then add more so it just kind of piles up on here so i'm gonna take a look at the predictions i've got three predictions here the first prediction yeah there and we have a truck so it can identify specifically that it does see the, the, the highest class, the most likely prediction that this image is a picture of, that the person taking this photo wasn't trying to take a picture of the bridge, wasn't trying to take a picture of the clouds, wasn't trying to take a picture of the tree. This photo was meant to be a picture of a truck. And that's what the AI comes back to. Trailer truck, tractor trailer, trucking rig, rig. Uh, articulated lorry. Ooh, I, I, <laughs> I, I like the fact that it's got a little little UK English in there. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, and then it's it's giving me this probability here. Now the probability, this means this is the one it's most sure of. And it is saying, I am 64% sure that I am looking at a truck in this photo. So you also get this weird thing here where you can, um, you can almost set like a threshold of how sure something should be before it fires. So let's say I'm I'm doing a uh, <laughs> I'm doing a website where people sell their trucks, right? And you're going to upload your truck photo, and um, it says like, okay, I'm pretty sure that you know this is a truck, but it's only. Um, you know, 40% sure that that's a truck. And that was the most likely prediction there. You could probably, uh, you have the ability on a client side, say like, hey, a little bit denied here. Uh, we need a we need another photo or, or are you sure or something like that. So there's, uh, well, of course, with the truck website, that's a little bit silly. <laughs> However, but in there are situations that um, identification has to be more certain before it picks things. Uh, take, for instance, pneumonia detection or cancer detection. Um, you kind of want to be very sure before you tell a person that they have cancer or something like that. So uh, the nature of AI is that you not only get its prediction, but you also get a certain level of probability that comes along with them. I I, I, I have nothing to add. Like that was, that was <laughs> that, There's that, so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, all, all of that, all, all of that was really good. And I, and, and it's worth highlighting like one more time here is that, um, you know, all of that code that's running of, of it going in and checking the model and doing all of that, all of that is happening on the client. So yeah. it's, it's avoiding that round trip. So that example that you gave of, you know, I'm, I've created a website that we're going to use to, to sell trucks and you're going to, mm -hmm. you know, allow somebody to upload a picture. Now you, you can avoid that that round trip if you yeah. know that the image is not of, of a truck. You can avoid then the server having to process that. So you're yeah. you're just instantly going to get like infinite scale by yeah. by using something like this. And, and it's it's fantastic. I see this used all the time. Um, it could be used poorly and it could be used well. Uh, one of the things I like is when you go to a place like nextdoor.com and you have a disagreement with your neighbor, you type something a little mean, um, they actually, uh, I don't know if they use, they probably customize their own toxicity detector, but there are ones out there that you can use just as easily as this. And uh, it says, hey, before you post this, we're not gonna stop you. We are not going to stop you. You can say whatever you want. However, <laughs> keep in mind, um, these are your neighbors. Uh, are you sure that this is what you want to say to the people who live in your community? And uh, and then like, it's a great opportunity to sort of like get this gut check right then and there before they even ever send it off to the server to to get something kind of uh, sent. I almost wish that we could have this set up with some of the people <laughs> sending me emails. Like they started off with, "I hope this email finds you well." Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure you want that email to find me well? <laughs> Stop writing that. Hope it doesn't find you that you've escaped. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love the, the, the prospect of this. And I think that our future, of course, just like we've seen, um, You've got all the stuff on the server. You're doing your server side processing, and we're just sending HTML for web developers. And then, like, oh, we want some dynamic action for the uh, for the client. And then we start doing JavaScript, and then it kind of goes back. There's there's like a a framework system, and then you know today it's it's almost like API plus front end. You know, there's two different positions there. We're gonna see that same um, we're gonna see that same thing exactly happen over again. Uh, in in AI, you can probably say uh, maybe five, 10 years, I'm a front end um, AI specialist or I'm a back end AI specialist. And it'll totally mean different things on uh, what it is that you're deploying and what your, what your interaction with the user is versus uh, what you're doing with all that data. Right. I, and, you yeah. know, along those lines, I want to call something out here. So you you loaded up um, an existing model because yes. one of the things that uh, 
certainly anybody that's watching this this broadcast probably probably knows, and if if, if you don't, that's okay. Now now you're going to learn. Is that <laughs> training a model um, can be mm-hmm. really really expensive. That that's really where you yeah. start to need the, the 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 GPUs and and you know depending on on what it is that you're doing. Now we're going to start to need clusters and like lots and lots and lots of processing power to yeah. generate that model. But once you have the model, um, I don't want to discount the overhead of, of having to use it because there is still overhead and certainly the more complex the model is, the more overhead that there's going to be, but it's not going to be that same degree of overhead. So I don't yes. need to have a, a, a high-end GPU installed on my system to be able to use this model that you have here. Yeah, if we have time uh, after, I'll, I'll, I'll mess with this code a little bit more, but I'd love to show you, um, you know, what's great about this is that you can take these advanced models and then um, that have, people have spent, uh, let's be honest, millions upon millions of dollars like engineering and training and, and establishing and researching. And then you can modify them ever so slightly to serve a completely different need. And um, I can show you that in a little bit as well, if you'd like. Well, we still we've got about like 15, 20 minutes. So yeah. I will I will let you decide what do you what do you gotcha. you wrote the book on this? What do you yes. want to show us? All right, let's 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 go ahead and uh, let's let's pin the tail on the donkey with this one. We're looking at a truck. Uh, it, it sees snowplow. It sees a garbage trucker. I mean, all three of the top guesses that the AI gave me were fantastic. And you can get a list of all the guesses um, at the mobile net model. So we can go to here and here's here's the mobile net model that we're loading up there. If I just dig into the source and let me go ahead and make this screen a little bit bigger there for the people viewing at home. Uh, you can see all the image net classes right here. And here's all the different possibilities that you could possibly see. So I could actually check on here to make sure, you know, just do a search for the word truck and then get all the different kinds of uh, cool truck stuff. And I could make a truck detection, which is one cool thing. Um, and then another thing I could do is I could I could use these to like build something cool. So for instance, I'll, uh, we'll, maybe we'll come back and do it if we have the time. But um, let's say I wanted to make sure nobody's in my backyard <laughs> late at night. <laughs> and if it does, I want it to, uh, I want it to take a photo and send it to me, you know? And I don't need a server running. I could actually put that on a particular device. And then so I could just look for certain things that I don't want in my backyard. And if so, I could have the JavaScript action fire uh, if I find those things. So I could look for any of these things. Now, there isn't one for person, so I can't actually do that. But I could stop cats, apparently. Uh, but <laughs> of, I can look of, for of like, all different varieties. <laughs> yeah, there, oh yeah, there's so many interesting things that this thing is already set to find. But jeans, shirts, uh, glasses. So uh, I, I could basically I could say, give me your top ten finds on this uh, on my on my picture or my webcam or anything like that. And if you find glasses or if you find something else or you find a shirt or something like that then hey what i want you to do is i want you to run this particular code and i could do that today with just javascript knowledge not actually worried at all about uh, um, some of the models that they have here that you know it'll find these ridiculously cool things so maybe you want to make sure (laughs) nobody's riding a unicycle in your backyard uh, <laughs> so we can check for we can check for that can check as well. For that. <laughs> right? Uh, no, or, or someone uh, keeps parking a truck in your yard, and you want to get notified when that happens. Take you've got the truck detector, things like that. So uh, what's great about this is we've we've got access to this already trained model, um, and I I wish we had more time. We could we could we could actually write that up real quick. But I want to show you um, another thing. So, so you actually learn all this stuff in the book anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll say it that way. But I have another way of like, uh, you can take things and modify them to do new things. So we could train a new setup for my backyard where I'm like running around in my backyard. I, I noticed I'm finding clothes in all this. So what happens is I had, there's a lot of the person in my backyard has clothes, I'm safe. <laughs> But if I had like, uh, if I were able to do my own data, I could actually train a model to do all kinds of cool stuff and check my particular backyard. Um, but you don't have to start from scratch. Um, and so I'm going to show you a website I did as well. And you can try all this stuff, assortinghat.com. 
This is a silly uh, website, but uh, we do this in, I think, like chapter 10 or something like that. And the cool thing about uh, AI Sorting Hat is that we have this ability to draw right here and then get sorted into a particular house. Uh, so if I do a little circle there, um, and then what happens is you can see apparently circles are very uh, Slytherin-ish, but then I'm going to give myself a little beak, maybe like, well, but I'm an artist through and through. Look at that. Yeah. Like, there you go. <laughs> and so there you go. So now it's like kind of figured these things out. Uh, and that's really cool because um, this is a model that, that uh, you know, you can train, you can set up, and you just all kinds of cool data that's out there. But uh, this is a... Like you're saying, this is a 48 kilobyte model. This is a little, 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 little cute model that's sitting on a web page that's actually doing like computer vision and other stuff like that. Um, but if we wanted to, it took a while to train. Right now on my page, I'm just going to go to this. I'm going to switch on over to be able to uh, detect something that's never seen before, and it does it right in the page. So I'm going to load um, some Star Trek stuff for you, just to show you this. So it loaded the images. I've only got 50 images of each. That's a small data set. It's small stuff. All this is small potatoes. Create the features. Uh, you'll understand what these things mean. And then I'm going to say train it. And so you can watch the background sort of like clunk away a little bit here for a second uh, when I click the train. But it's and there we go. all of this literally right there in the browser. You're actually Done. training a model in the browser. It's trained. Yeah, it just trained right there. And it trained off of a small data set so what happened is I took that other data set that took a long time to train and modified it. And then now I've got one that can detect like uh, a star fleet here. Ah, you can see it already kind of got it. I'm not good at drawing these. <laughs> so, uh, let me see if I can do a complicated one for us here. I'll do the, the Klingon one. I am watching Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, it already knows I'm doing Klingon. Nice. I'll go, I'll go for the Ferengi and then we'll see if we can get all of them right here. Did it? Good job. That it's the Chicago Bears symbol, right? Is that what I'm really drawing here? <laughs> it, and it already knows I'm drawing Frankie. Uh, I could finish it out here, uh, but it'll just be more of this terrible drawing you're seeing. So, <laughs> no, we yeah, we we we've got that. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but this is what's great. So, yes, gigabytes of data. Yes, lots of time training. Then you get the small function, the small uh, codified thing that you can put into your web pages that can do magic. It can do um, amazing, cool things. And then when you have this, um, you are then uh, able to modify it and, and adjust it and, and sort of like use your imagination to apply it to new and cool and creative uh, things as long as you know how to speak the uh, the wizardese <laughs> of, of ai <laughs> okay cool 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 we've got about 10 minutes yet yeah yeah we could do uh well there's all kinds of fun stuff i could do <laughs> <laughs> uh but is there is there any questions uh so so kind of like just want to make sure not at the moment i've been keeping an eye on on, on the various chat windows and at the moment yeah. we're good as far yeah. as as far as questions go so um, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, we go ahead. Uh, we can. Uh, there's there's no shortage of weird stuff that I'm happy to create here. <laughs> <laughs> and I a have more... a large list of crazy creations that I've done. That Do you have too. a little more code that you could show off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Okay. Um, we can do, uh, we can add the detection for uh, glasses and shirt and, and pants, yeah. or we can get into um, watching like the, the metrics of how a model chain, uh, actually trains and what the training code looks like. Let's, let's go adventure. with the first one. Let's 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 go from the client side. So I've already got the model and 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 now I'm using it. So let's let's go that direction. Yeah. yeah so we can go back to uh, to this and then adjust the image to do the person detection. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I am uh, gonna go ahead and switch this out for an image of a person, which fortunately I have. Uh, <laughs> I figured um, as much. Yeah. Smart having this, right? Uh, this is this is my friend John Major, uh, and he's reading a very interesting book there. Uh, 
this guy is like a model. And so asking him to take pictures was, uh, was a genius <laughs> move for me. Um, so now like that we've got the predictions here, uh, we've got this listing of predictions. Uh, one of the things I can do now is just like, uh, let's go ahead and, and, and see if we're trying to find a person. So I'm going to call like uh, found it. And this is going to be the thing that we want to find, right? So I'm just writing some JavaScript here and I've got the different classes that we could have possibly have. So uh, predictions dot, uh, do a four each. Because, you know, we don't do that enough, right? <laughs> and then um, we're going to dig in here for a moment. And then so I'm going to say found it equals. And so I'm just mapping over all the different classes that are coming back here. And I'm going to say it's once it's true, it stays true. Um, but I'm also going to go ahead and grab like um, the class name off of here, which are all on. these really cool little names that we have. Um, Oh, uh, typo. Yeah. On uh, I... Nope, down below on 14, yeah. uh, you have found it equals found it. You need a D. There we are. Keyboards. They're going <laughs> to stick around. Um, Hello, computer. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to play a game? <laughs> uh, so this is like looking for genes here. So if uh, we're mapping over all the predictions that are returned, and then um, I'm going to return a true here. So, you know, dot includes, um, just kind of bring in there. So once this turns true, it sees something in here, right? And then so I'm just going to say, like, um, if found it, if you did see the genes, alert uh, person detected. And so we'll do that. OK, so um, you can see that we don't actually, it doesn't see any genes in there or something like that. So one of the things I could do here is say, like, uh, normally, a model returns every class. So uh, the mobile net actually has a 1,000 potential predictions. And what it does is the most likely prediction is that one that was like earlier we saw it was a truck it was like 65 percent but it still returns like you know it still has a label for like genes or something like that and it'll say uh yeah 0. 0.000001 percent is like how likely i'm seeing genes in this photo um this is very common for people who are used to ai and kind of like get used to this it's like it just tells you what it saw of all the things in there um, in in this sort of thing, which is uh, called a softmax activation. There are ways to uh, do it separately, but I'm not going to get into the vernacular too far. I don't want to lose anybody. So I'm going to say, give me the uh, give me 10 of the updates here. Hmm. So uh, with 10, it does not see genes or my code doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw in the other things that a person should have. Um, P dot class name dot includes. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh no! You have PL. Ah, yeah, this is why I don't. Uh, I don't want uh, code. <laughs> P class name. Yeah. Uh, includes... P dot class name. Yeah, that would be smart. Yeah. Bow. And then let's go ahead and see here a shirt. And then, uh, well, you can't really see a shirt very well there, so we'll say p dot class name dot includes maybe a hat. Uh, I think they have. I don't know if they have a hat, but I know they have uh, glasses. Do you know? Oh, well, because it, it, oh. it's got an empty string. <laughs> oh, <laughs> glasses. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. So this go. one is not empty string. It sees. Uh, it sees his glasses there, and I'm sure it detects like. Glasses, goggles, like actually, let's take a look at this for a second. Uh, glasses. So binoculars, field glasses, opera glasses, like a whole bunch of different things, sunglasses, dark glasses, shades, all these. But when any of those strike a positive here, and then ta-da, ta-da, you don't know anything about AI. You don't have to. I have used this. I've consumed this. I've added to website. I knew ha I have a webcam now i could put in my backyard or i could load photos and now i'm using ai to tell me what's in a photo uh go back and show somebody this six years ago and their brains would just fall <laughs> off the planet <laughs> like where we're going and that you, you know 
two years from now, they just keep speeding up. Two years from now, this is going to get even crazier and even cooler. So um, I think that this is this is like a great demo of just how powerful this is getting. I'm doing this in the browser. Uh, my computer is not even choking at all. I'm doing all this stuff. My computer is at 31 uh, percent of CPU. And, and almost so all great. of that is, is just us in StreamYard. In streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's, 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 that's very cool. That's very cool. And so, you know, what's, what's great about this is that it, it makes it that much more approachable. So um, there are models that are out there. So as long as it's a model that's, uh, that, that works with TensorFlow, I can go ahead, pull that in and then write the JavaScript and, uh, and away I go with that. Yes. And so uh, sort of like bringing these in and starting to um, just to know what's out there. Uh, there is some pretty cool stuff. So this classification stuff is pretty cool, but uh, there's a ridiculous number of fun ideas and interesting stuff. And yeah, of course, you can write your own if you want to, but just taking what's already out there and, and applying it. You can make some cool stuff. There's, you know, there, there, there's an old coworker of mine who who loved to say we're not launching rockets here. Um, and and granted, you know, that might change depending on the company that you're working for these days. But the the point that he was making back when he was saying that is that whatever it is that we're doing, somebody else has already done it. Like we're not necessarily nice. doing anything that's special. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, somebody else has already faced this problem. Somebody else has already built something. And especially in today's day and age, somebody else has either, you know, put something out there into the open source or they've made a service available yeah. um, that, 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 that I can use. And so, you know, take advantage of, of what's already there. And, and again, it's, a, it's, exactly. it's what I really like is you're taking advantage of what, of, of what somebody else has done. They've done all the hard work. I'm adding in, you know, 20-ish lines of JavaScript, and now I'm able to do some pretty cool stuff. That, and, and, and I got to tell you, you know, being in the consulting company, the coolest things that we're seeing are the ideas that clients are coming to us and saying, hey, my disruptor is I'm going to be using this AI service or I'm going to be using this and kind of adding that inside there. And it's like, yeah, nobody's doing that. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because, you know, I, I feel like when the web first came out, everybody was like, OK, that's the web. And it has the three ideas that we have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now I can't you can't keep up with it. There's just too many amazing ideas. Like anytime you come with, with an idea, it's you're not the first one. You just have to be the best one, right? right. We're we're early now in the, in the concepts of like you you can bring these things to your products and ideas, but you'll be the first one, uh, and that's that's something that uh, it's exciting to see again as as old guys as we are, <laughs> <laughs> seeing it for the another time. Um, it's cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Gan, thank you so much yeah. for for coming on. Um, feel free to plug your book one more time. Yes. Absolutely. I, I tell you what, I'm giving away some copies for y'all. Um, so I'm going to be tweeting. Follow me at at Gant Laborde. It's right there on my name. Um, right after this, I'm going to pick some people. I'm going to put a tweet out there. Go ahead and say, hey, I want the book. Uh, share it. Do whatever you want. And then I guess tomorrow I'll come back, pick some lucky people, and we will send you signed copies of the book. Um, if you know web, you can know all this stuff. And that's what the book shows you. I love it. Thank you so much for, for, for coming on. Go find Gant. Go find, go find his book. Um, that is TensorFlow. You know, you can, like we said, you know, cool, do some really cool stuff with relatively little code. Uh, mm -hmm. That is Web Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are here every Wednesday, 3 p.m., talking to really cool people about some really neat stuff. Um, come, come by and, and check us out. Bye. Bye. Come to New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs>